In this tutorial, we're going to look very quickly at touch functionality in the Vector-Based Screen Editor, or VBSC. Touch capability allows you to create simpler, more intuitive display screens on the displays which support it and are very easy to implement in guide. Let's take a look. Several Danfoss displays have touch detection capabilities. Examples are the DP720 and the DM1000, but the list will be continually growing. All touch-capable displays use the Vector-Based Screen Editor, or VBSE. Check the data sheet or the API in the HWD for your display to see if your display supports touch functionalities. For displays with a touch-sensitive screen, the operating system returns feedback signals for touch events attached to either graphic elements in your screen design, like text or images, for screen areas that have been specifically designated as touch sensitive, or for the screen as a whole. Each loop in your guide application, the operating system returns a signal with a state for each of the touch sensitive elements. The states are idle state, touched, touch released, double click, long press, swipes, and then an XY position where the event occurred. A number of the states can be modified by writing values to the API. For instance, you can modify the time duration, which causes a long press event, or the number of pixels that have to be touched to constitute a swipe. There's an additional parameter associated with touch-sensitive screen assets, which merits a bit of explanation. It's the isSync parameter. This parameter dictates whether a touch event will be consumed by the screen asset or whether it will be passed to the assets below in the stacking order. For instance, in this scenario, if all three of the green, blue, and red rectangles were receiving touch events, and an event happened where indicated on the green rectangle, the green rectangle would receive a touch event. It would then be passed through to the blue, since isSync is set to false for green. Blue would receive an event, but its isSync value is set to true, so the red rectangle below would not receive an event. So from a programming perspective, using the touch event is very easy. Let's say that we were currently using a physical button on the bezel of our display to trigger an event, and that we were porting the application to a new display where we wanted to take advantage of the touch capabilities. Let's look at how that could be done. Here's our original code. We have an enable signal on a gauge in our display screen. Clicking physical button 1 on our display will activate and deactivate the gauge. When it is deactivated, the gauge setting will drop to 0. So let's say we wanted to change our program so that instead of clicking on the button, touching anywhere on the gauge itself toggles it off and on. The first thing to do is to pick the graphic element that will trigger the event. As we want any touch on the gauge to trigger the event, we'll use the background gauge image itself. Since the gauge image is on the bottom of the display list, below the needle and all the text elements, we have to make sure that the isSync value is set to false for all of the elements above it. We're going to be passing our touch signal out of the screen definition. So let's create an output value called touch status. Now we'll link the touch output for the gauge graphic to this output signal. Looking at the API, the touch status signal is a U16, so we'll set it to that data type when we create the output signal. Otherwise, guide will give us a warning. Now we can pick up that signal in the graphical part of our guide program and replace our bezel button touch by a screen touch event. Checking the API, we see that zero indicates the idle state and anything above zero indicates a touch event, such as a touch, a swipe, or a long touch. Like we did for the bezel button touch, We'll trigger our event with a positive transition of the screen touch event.
That's all there is to it. We've now replaced the bezel button press event with a touch screen event. It's interesting to note that, in this case, we're detecting the touch event in the screen definition, passing it out to guide, doing a minimal calculation, essentially just implementing the toggle, and then passing it back in. Note that we could implement this completely within the screen definition itself by adding a POU. The advantage of this approach is that the POU becomes part of the screen definition and would be exported and imported with it if used as a widget. To get more information on integrating POUs into screen definitions and, by extension, widgets, see the video POUs in widgets in the VBSC. Remember that, in addition to monitoring the touch status of graphic elements such as text and images, you can create touch areas in any part of the screen by dragging in the touch area component. We hope that this tutorial will help get you started implementing touch screens. Touch screens are easy to implement and guide, and allow you to make more useful and intuitive display applications. Remember that touch events can be passed to POUs as part of the screen definition or widget, which will further improve portability. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum at plusoneforum.danfoss. Dot com, or contact the Plus One Help Desk at Plus One Help Desk, P L U S, plus sign, the digit one, Help Desk at danfoss.com. Thank you for your attention.